Hi, my name is Malcolm and I'm a PSLE Science Specialist here at the Pig Lab. Welcome to another episode of PSLE Science Made Simple. In this video, I'll be going through a past year examination question on the topic of Web of Life. I've also prepared this question for you to download for free by clicking a link in the description box below. So, let's get started. Question 2. Food relationships between some organisms are shown in the food web below. Now, they tell us if the population of animal C decreases, they want us to find out which of the following graphs will show the changes in the population of animals A and D. Now, before we take a look at this question, let's look at the food web first. Now, remember, whenever you see a food web, what's the first thing we should always do? We should always label the food producer and the king. So, how do we find out which one is the food producer? Remember, the food producer can make its own food. So, which organism here is the food producer? It has to be the plant. So, I'm going to label it as FP for short. And which organism here is the king? Remember, the king of the food web, do you think it will get eaten? Or will it eat other organisms? The king would always be eating other organisms. Which means, should there be arrows pointing away from it? Or towards it only? There should only be arrows pointing towards it. So which organism is that? We can see it has to be D. So we can label D as the king. I'm going to draw a crown to represent the king. And in this question, they said, what would happen if the population of animal C decreases? So to represent this, I'm going to draw an arrow pointing downwards to show a decrease in the population of C. Now, let's take a look what would happen to the population of D if the population of C decreased. Now, before we find out what happened, we need to see how they are related to each other. So, do you know what is the relationship between C and D here? We can see that D feeds on C. Now, think about it. If D feeds on C and the population of C decreases, do you think D would be happy or sad? D would be sad. But why would D be sad? Remember, a decrease in the population of C would mean, is there going to be more food or less food for D? There's going to be less food, which means if D is not happy, what will happen to D? D is going to die. And when D dies, what happens to the population of D? The population of D would also decrease. So let's take a look at the options now. For option one, did the population of D decrease? No, it shows an increase instead, so 1 is definitely wrong. Now, what about option 2? Did the population of D decrease? Yes. What about 3? Also yes. What about 4? Also yes. So, so far, options 2, 3, and 4 are possible. Now, let's take a look at what happens to the population of A if the population of C decreases. First of all, what is their relationship? This time, we can see, does A feed on C? Or does A get eaten by C? A gets eaten by C. So if there is a decrease in the population of C, do you think A is going to be happy or sad? A is going to be happy. How come A will be happy when there is less C? Think about this. If there is less C feeding on A, this means what will happen to the population of A then? Population of A should increase or decrease? the population of A would increase. So I'm going to draw an arrow upwards to represent this. Now let's take a look at option two. Is there an increase in the population of A? Definitely. So this is possible. What about number three? There is also an increase in the population of A, so this is also possible. What about option four? Also possible. Hmm, does it mean that options two, three, and four are all correct? Which means we can choose between two, three, and four. No, whenever you encounter a question like this, where there are multiple possible options, the next thing you need to take a look at is going to be the initial population. So you have to remember, whenever we look at a food web, do you know which organism always has the largest starting population? The one with the largest starting population is always going to be the plants. Because the plants are the main source of food for the organisms in this food web. So I'm going to write this down. 
we know plants would have the largest initial population. And then, which organism would always have the smallest initial population? It's always going to be the king. So, I'm going to write this down. The king will have the smallest initial population. In fact, when we look at a food web, when we look at it from the plants, which is the food producer, all the way down to the king, the initial population is always going to decrease. So this means, if we look at A and we look at D, which organism should have a smaller initial population? It's going to be D. So we can use that to check the graphs as well. So if you take a look at option 2, does D have a smaller initial population? No, so 2 is out. I want you to write this down. It should be smaller than A. So we can cross out option 2. Now, what about option 3? Does D have a smaller initial population? Yes, so 3 is possible. What about number 4? Does D have a smaller initial population? No. So we know that option 4 is also out because it should be smaller than A. With that, do we have our answer already? Yes, the correct answer should be option 3. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to check out more videos by us, do click on the links on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!